Yes? Do you believe that Blackmore Manor is haunted? No, of course not. I've lived here for many, many years, and I can tell you without a doubt that absolutely no ghosts walk these halls. An occasional odd creak here and there, yes, but no ghosts. But I do sometimes wonder if those who have passed away remain with us, lingering on. I miss my brother terribly, and I sometimes wonder if he is in some way still here. Goodbye. Good day. <laughs> like I did something right. Polly is a stupid bird! Polly is a stupid bird! Attention to the bird behind the curtain. The time has come for closing. Darn, it was too slow.
once more. This wand probably works through magnets. Pay no attention to the bird behind the curtain. Whoa, something tells me I just succeeded in lighting the forge. And the winner is... By pulling out different plugs, I can create different patterns in the mold. The forge is lit! Wow, molten metal. There, that looks right. Whatever you just found, it's mine. I'm the Penvin and not you. Besides, I would have found it before you did if I didn't have to sit there all day learning all that other silly rubbish. What is that? That is the Pendolin treasure. A rock? 600 years of secrets and mystery and puzzles all because of a stupid rock? No way. There must be something under it. No, don't touch it! Help! Let me help me! It's pitch dark in here. I can't see anything. Get me out of here, please! I'm sorry I was mean to you before. I'm sorry for everything. What do you mean by everything? It's my fault, Linda Six. I mean, she's not really sick. I just made her think she is. I left that curse in her room and gave her allergy pills and put her medicine in a moisturizer. You made her think that she's changing into the Beast of Blackmore, didn't you? I just wanted to go away. I just wanted to be Daddy and me and Mommy, my real Mommy. Please don't make me talk anymore, Nancy. There's no air in here. I can't breathe. I've got to figure out a way to get that box off of her fast. Thank you. Dear Ned, well, there is a beast of Blackmore, Jane.
She made poor Linda think she was turning into a monster by putting her uncle's hair restorer in Linda's moisturizer. She also slipped Mrs. Drake's allergy pills into Linda's food so she'd feel woozy all the time. An extremely dangerous thing to do. Needless to say, Jane's father was very upset, especially when he found out Jane had done it because she still wants him and her real mother to get back together. After Jane apologized to Linda and Hugh apologized to both of them, they all resolved to do whatever it takes to become a real family. As for Blackmore Manor, ever since I told him about all the passageways and gadgetry I discovered, Hugh has become fascinated with his family history and has asked, no, ordered Ethel to teach him what she's taught Jane. And while he doesn't believe for a second that the meteorite in that old alchemy lab has magical powers, he has encouraged Jane to come up with a puzzle to help ensure its safekeeping, just as initiates have been doing for centuries. Which reminds me, the Pendulins swore me to secrecy when it comes to all their traditions, so don't tell anybody any of this, okay? Nigel suspected something was up when he came to get his laptop and has been hounding me ever since. This is just the kind of stuff he'd love to include in that unauthorized tell-all he's trying to write. If he calls me one more time, I'm telling on him. To Mrs. Drake. <laughs> That'll teach him. Ever yours, Nancy. The year is 1930, and everything is on the rise. Unemployment, government breadlines, and organized crime. In the midst of it all, a heroine is born. Armed with only a flashlight, a blue roadster, and a spirited resourcefulness, a 16-year-old detective will go on to inspire hope in the hearts of young girls and curses upon the lips of evildoers everywhere. Her name? Nancy Drew.